Hi guys, uh, this is phase one of a renewable plant room installation. Um, there's no renewables installed yet, but there's a few things in here that I think you might find interesting. So um, let me give you a little tour and I'll just sort of point out anything else that I think is sort of um, prominent. Okay. So here is our plant room. Um, essentially we have a large cylinder there, pool plant down there for a swimming pool, a load of pipes which I'll go into what they do, uh, one mixed circuit and one unmixed circuit, I'll give a quick overview of that, and a buffer or large low loss header is you might sort of understand it. So as I said currently this is being heated by a Navian oil boiler, which is outside. I'll show you that later if um, this doesn't go on for too long. Later on, uh, I mean, this would be mental if you were installing all of this for an oil boiler. <laughs> the reason all this pipe works in is because later on, where those two pipes are there, he's having a ground source heat pump put in here. Um, this plant room also is going to have uh, solar thermal, not in here on the roof, obviously. It will have a solar thermal um, controller in here, um, solar thermal feeding into the system and PV, which again I will go into. So uh, just to show you what these pipes are, um, so it's uh, a bit more easy to digest. Um, these are the pipes for the oil boiler that come in. We have flow down here via this two port to the cylinder and flow to the buffer for heating and then a common return where that T is. So that's the oil coming in, the oil heating coming in. Uh, that's a second return going back to the buffer. Um, that's a hot and a cold going to the cylinder. Um, here is flow and return for the pool heat exchanger. Uh, and that's it, that's all those pipes there. Um, that's another hot and cold that feed a shower and stuff over there. Hot and cold over there. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that demystifies that um, masterpiece. <laughs> Um, pool heat exchanger. These are uh, pool heat exchangers are typically tube in tube, which means there's a tube with a tube around it, uh, and you would pipe these up flow to flow. So the hottest part, uh, which that's the, yeah, that's the flow. The hottest flow into the tube in tube is where the flow goes out to the system. Um, so that would be counter current. So flow goes that way in uh, through the primary and then the pool goes that way but the hot the two flows at the same end but that's counter current so anyway um the pool sorry the oil boiler comes down along and into these uh, headers these headers it's a flow and return header for this basically that one and that one obviously the flow being the top the reason there's six valves here is because oil is going to be one Ground source is going to be another uh, heat source potentially. We'll probably disconnect the um, oil once the ground source is in. And air source may be another input uh, because you can get slightly more efficiency from air source in the summer. Uh, won't go into that in too much detail because I want to try and keep this relatively short. So um, yeah, the reason for all the valves uh, isn't to make it look complicated. It's because we're putting multiple heat sources into this buffer. Central buffer that stores the heat um, so energy in this side and return, energy out this side, um, uh, filter and strainer on the return. So energy out goes to one mixed circuit, which is for the underfloor and radiators. The radiators will be sized for the same flow temperatures as the underfloor and they'll work at the same delta T. So the underfloor for this whole building, which I'll give you a quick pan of in a bit, and the radiators will be all run off that one pump. Um, uh, and this is an unmixed circuit for the pool heat exchanger. So if there's extra heat in here um, from the various sources which you'll go into, uh, it'll be blended down for the radiators and this pump will basically cycle on and off if that ever gets up to temperature. But really we'll probably just dump all the spare heat out to the pool. The pool's only gonna sit a couple of uh, degrees above it, ambient temperature anyway, and only really heat up a lot when there's extra um, free energy in the atmosphere via PV, solar thermal, or, or whatever else. So, 
Um, heating flow and return, I mean, heating flow and return is pretty straightforward. Just goes off to the system. Um, but we also have in here solar thermal coil. So solar thermal coil is in here, but also in here. We'll have about 10, 8 kilowatts of solar thermal installed on the roof here uh, to a solar thermal um, pumping station, um, which can control two um, heat stores. Uh, it'll have a primary heat store to heat first, which will be the hot water, gets that up to temperature. If it gets that whole store up to temperature, it will divert any spare energy over to this. Uh, and if the pool is cooling, obviously it will dump it straight into the pool. Um, if not, it will just store it in there or use it for heating. Uh, so uh, that's the solar thermal. Same with PV. That's a six kilowatt element. That's a six kilowatt element as well. Um, they're quite cool because you can uh, use these in combination with um, variable rate tariffs, electricity tariffs, such as uh, Octopus Agile tariff, which basically means uh, half hourly rates of electricity vary um, from minus 5p up to I don't know, probably 18p or something. I'm not sure. I'm not on one personally. But uh, as the um, rate becomes in your favour, you can quickly charge up your uh, cylinder. Or he's going to have PV here as well. With his spare PV, once he's charged his battery, he can dump any spare energy in this cylinder. And the same for there. Um, he can charge that up. Uh, and the reason for 6 kilowatts is because if he's got a short window, obviously, when he's... Um, needs uh, when he can get cheap energy he can you know blast it in there at extra high rate plus it's better backup um this house is currently 26 kilowatts he's going to put in a whole load of uh, triple glazing and everything else we should get it down to 10 kilowatts then which is when we put in this ground source and probably disconnect the oil so pv i've talked about um uh, which will be mainly via the uh, sorry, not PV, the immersions, which will be fed by the PV and all the agile tariff that will he'll join up to. Solar thermal, both feeding into the system, which distributes around the house and pool. Um, uh, oh, OK. So the second return loop um, I found quite interesting or is of note, I should say. What people have started to notice now that hot water priority systems have come more prevalent um, uh, when I say hot water priority, I mean that it does hot water and then heating separately. It doesn't do both at the same time, which is very common with ground source. Uh, it almost has to be done with ground source because you want to keep it a light, nice low temperature um, for the for the heating. So you have to come high temperature to heat the uh, cylinder, low temperature for the heating. What we found is uh, is that the secondary return will cool down that cylinder quite a lot and destratify it. Um, and then what you have is the ground source or whatever uh, you've got putting into the system continually jumping over to reheat that store um, and uh, and struggling to keep up with the heating, um, uh, which is also less efficient for the ground source anyway, because it has to sort of ramp up um, uh, to, to heat the cylinder. So what I've done here is I, this is a bespoke cylinder. Notice it's long and slim for stratification. So if we could have had a short one for the same volume, this is 350 litres, and, and fat, but because uh, instead we went long and slim, there's more stratification layers within here. Uh, and that essentially means that um, uh, we had to have 350 litres, high volume anyway, because you're storing lower temperature uh, hot water from the ground source, because the flow and return are lower, you have to have a higher volume for your lower temperature hot water. Uh, and that's in this, uh, this is the ground source coil in here. Uh, and then you need an extra chunk of volume as well for the for the um, solar thermal, which is down here. You need a nice cool stratified layer for the uh, solar thermal to work efficiently, because it wants to sort of um, uh, drink up um, the energy into much cooler um, uh, store of water. Anyway, so nice big um, uh, uh, store here for the, those reasons. Uh, you would usually have your uh, second return tapping quite a bit higher um, uh, and it would usually be in 15 millimetres. I've got them to take it right down um, and I've also got them to do it in a one inch tapping or 28 uh, mil tapping. So this would normally be probably in 15 mil as well. Um, I've run the second return in 16 mil MLC 
Um, but I've done it in 20, uh, 22, then 28, so it slows right down before it goes in. And then uh, by the time it gets to here, it's going very slow and the cool can just drop down and the hot can rise rather than coming quickly and stirring it up. Um, what other people have done is um, when they've had this issue where it's either destratified it by churning up the stratification um, is they've plumbed in the second return into the cold inlet to give it more uh, buffer time before it cools it down and has to switch over. So, um, uh, so that's of note. The other thing we've done is was we're going to have this pump. Uh, they're installing PIRs in the bathrooms at the moment. And we'll time, so when you walk in a bathroom, PIR is a movement sensor, we'll send uh, 240 to this and we'll time that 240 so the hot is pumped out until it gets to the other end of the house, not till it comes all the way back here, but it will go right the way to the other end of the house um, and then we'll time it to turn off then. If someone goes in another bathroom, yes, it will come on for the same amount of time, but then we've got a, um, a, uh, a second return uh, pipe stat on here, um, uh, which is set for about 40 degrees that will cut the power to the pump. So it doesn't, A, keep turning, churning up that, B, wasting heat along that pipe, um, uh, and C, using electricity. So, um, yeah, there's a few measures there to stop this issue with second return um, uh, causing... Um, issues with uh, uh, boilers and heat pumps jumping over onto uh, heat up the cylinder. Loving these vessels from IMI. Um, one screw at the top, which is great. They always have awkward screws behind that you can't get into. This one still does have that, unfortunately, but it's still much better. Um, oh, and, and these little valves from, I think this is from Screwfix or something, uh, from Tesla. These are, I quite like those. Um, there's the expansion. They're both 80 litres. Uh, that's probably enough for the pool plant room. For, um, yeah, for the plant room for now. Show you the quick board outside. Oh, this is the pool or skating bowl if you're into skating. That's the house. It's nothing outrageously big. It's actually only one room deep. But then he's extending it down the side there. Interestingly, extensions can bring down your heat loss because if that area is high heat loss at the moment, it's, I don't know, 60, 70 years old or whatever it is, uh, um, this will be obviously new build quality, so that can bring down the uh, uh, heat loss from the building. Oil boiler. I don't really do oil, so it's not my forte, but for anyone else um, who does, this is the Navian... Uh, uh, the Navian um, uh, oil boiler external unit. Um, I'm told that this looks a bit more um, advanced than a typical um, than a typical oil boiler. So uh, I don't know if that's of any interest to anyone. So yeah, quick overview. Um, we've got PV and solar thermal heating this buffer, which goes off via the mixers to the pool or the heating, um, and PV and solar thermal heating this. Uh, and they're also both going to be heated by a ground source heat pump, 10 kilowatt um, ground source heat pump roughly um, uh, sat there. And we're probably going to have a, an air source in there at some point as well. Ignore the cabling, that's all going to be tidied up. This is all temporary. Uh, any questions um, about the installation or any questions about um, anything really just post on uh, post in the comments section and um, I'll do my best to help cheers bye several months later hey guys a uh, quick update on um, this job uh, I've had to come back or send one of the guys back just before Christmas to repipe this um, I realized after looking at some of the photos this was installed wrong um, just down to lack of experience with pool boilers or pool, pool heat exchangers because this pipe work would be empty usually um, it, this pipe work on, on the pool side only fills up when that pumps on if this was installed on its side uh, only half of the tube in tube would fill up so half of the heat exchanger wouldn't be exchanging so uh, we had to come back and flip this on its side um, just before Christmas because uh, he wanted a Christmas day swim um, so, uh, and another important point on that actually is that um, we managed to get that pool out there up to 18 degrees on a minus two day. Now, why that's impressive is that I've sized this heat loss for this property 
at around about 25 kilowatts. It's very leaky, single glazing um, everywhere, uh, lots of exposed walls because it's a funny shape. And uh, yeah, it's just a very leaky house. So I put in a 20 kilo, 28 kilowatt boiler, um, uh, not thinking that he'd really want to use it in the winter, but fair enough. I said, you'd probably have to turn your heating off in the house uh, if you want to heat the pool. He said that was fine. Um, however, he didn't. He heated the house simultaneously to the pool off a 28 kilowatt boiler uh, with a six kilowatt immersion um, uh, and, and got the pool to 18 degrees. So that goes, to, I mean, I used several different pool heat loss calculators and all of them were coming out at about, well, between 80 and 150 kilowatts, which is not a surprise because the old boiler that was sat here, which was just an oil pool boiler, was 130 kilowatts. So we've taken out 130 kilowatts, replaced it with a 28 kilowatt boiler, which has heated the house uh, and, well, which is supposedly 25 kilowatts. Um, perhaps that's an over egg uh, of, of what the house's actual loss is. I mean, what the house's current loss is, is actually neither here nor there because uh, he's, re, you know, he's reinstalling sort of treble glazing and uh, up upgrading all the doors and things. Uh, um, prior to us installing the, the heat pump, we're going to get it down to 10 kilowatts. But yeah, the, the, maybe the house load was a lot smaller than that, but the pool load, there was none of the calculators were anywhere near uh, suggesting that this would even have a slight effect on a minus two day. And it didn't. It had a 20 degree differential. I think if we left it on another day, it would have gone up a bit more as well. So um, that was very interesting. Um, actually, while we're here as well, uh, just a bit about this, these cylinders, the McDonald's um, water storage cylinders. Um, these are um, copper. You can actually see on the tapping there. These are fully copper um, and they're a bit different. So I just want to say some things about them. So these have got a 28 mil tapping for the coils, which goes into a 28 mil header and then comes off in two 22 mil copper coils, which run in parallel. Because they're running in parallel, the flow rate halves, the resistance is quartered. So nice and low resistance. And then they've got some copper fins uh, welded onto the heat exchangers there as well. So um, yeah, just a bit of a different design and worth, um, worth sort of bearing in mind when you're looking at cylinders. These guys also do rectangular cylinders for um, you know tight spaces. And they also do galvanized um, finish uh, rather than the white. Uh, in fact, they do lots of different things. But um, yeah, this is a, a interesting company I've not used before, so I've been quite impressed with these so far. Um, I think that's it. Thanks, guys. Flashback. Uh, this is actually going to be re-piped completely again soon anyway, because we're going to put an air source heat pump in to heat the pool, as well as using um, the solar thermal and everything else we're putting in here. Um, so actually, that's... 130 kilowatts here and three other between 30 and 50 kilowatt boilers we've installed so what's that uh 60 120 so about 200 and well 30 60 110 yeah about 230 kilowatts of boiler has been removed here and a 28 kilowatt boiler has been put in place <laughs> and another point on that note uh we're removing hundreds of kilowatts worth of uh gas and oil boilers that heat pools um I think customers, if they use any of the online calculators, you know, or, or even speak to experienced installers, they're going to be worried about installing a 12 kilowatt heat pump in place of that. Well, actually, it's quite evident that maybe the old rules of thumb and calculators weren't anywhere near and uh, a 12 kilowatt air source heat pump will still make it pretty toasty. You don't need poles at 28 degrees anyway. I, I think that's a bit mad in this day and age. Um, I, they just need to be a little bit above the ambient air temperature, in my opinion, uh, which if you leave a heat pump on, that's what it'll do. It'll maintain a set degrees above ambient air temperature, or you can target a specific um, pool temperature, provided it's sized correctly. So, yeah, um, more investigation there needed, I think. End of flashback. Another couple of quick tips, guys. Um, first of all, if you're watching this on YouTube, which is likely, obviously subscribe, but much more importantly, make sure you click on the little bell notification down in the corner down here. Uh, and by hitting that bell icon, your phone will get a notification every time we upload a video so you don't miss out on anything. Uh, second of all, go to heatgeek.com and make sure you sign up to our newsletter. We've got a ton of in really interesting stuff coming out and um, some courses that you'll probably be interested in. Okay, guys, thanks. Have a good one.